We'll now look at the trigger settings. The debugger provides three settings per trigger to control a debugging behavior. We can see the list of triggers here and under the settings we have enabled, disabled or break. Enabled means that the trigger is available for debugging. Disabled means that the code in the trigger will still execute but is not available for debugging. You may find this useful if you have infrastructure code that is tried and tested that you do not need to step through on each debug session. This will help your productivity while debugging. Break means that the debugger will always halt when that trigger is entered. I will demonstrate this on the retrieve trigger and the detail trigger. On retrieve, I know I have some standard code in there, so I'm not going to want to debug this each time, so I'll disable this. On the detail at field level, I'm going to say that I always want to debug this. So I'll say break. If I apply this, when I hit retrieve, we should see it halt. We can see the detail field trigger and it's halted automatically. I don't have a break point, but because I've set the trigger to halt, it's stopped. Macro retrieve will fire the retrieve trigger. In this case, I set the retrieve trigger to disabled, so we will not expect a debugger to go into that trigger. However, in this case, we know that the retrieve trigger contains the retrieve statement. This in turn will fire the read trigger. And we can see there that it didn't go into the retrieve trigger, but we can see the resultant read statements. Again, when I hit the clear button, because I've said to break on all detail triggers, it breaks automatically. I'll now show the break on error settings. Many times when debugging, it is not always clear that an error is occurring unless you go looking for it. On this component, I have a button that activates two components. When I click it, there is not obviously anything going wrong. If I debug and say halt and click it again, we can see the first activate gives me a minus 58, i.e. the component does not exist. The second activate gives me a minus 50. Now unless I was explicitly looking for this in the code, I wouldn't necessarily spot these errors. What we can do is get the debugger to watch for these types of errors and alert us whenever they occur. We do this by going to the debugger settings and setting error checks. On the error tabs we can say break on proc error and by adding these breaks whenever the debugger sees these statuses it will automatically break. This has the advantage of meaning that we don't have to step through every line of code explicitly looking for these errors. If they occur, the debugger will tell us. If I put minus 50 in, that will alert me whenever a signature is not found. Minus 58 will alert me whenever a component is not found. I can go on to add any of the other proc errors as well. And so on. This time when I click my button, the debugger will automatically break when it sees those errors. So here we can see it tried to activate that component we got a proc error of minus 58, so it's done the automatic break. If I hit go, we can see I got a proc error of minus 50, and again, it's automatically done the break. Using this technique makes it easy to find errors you didn't know you had in your system.
we will now look at how to prevent debugging. Preventing debugging can be achieved in one of two ways. The first is to add the no debug statement to your PROC code, for example in the execute trigger of your component or in the startup shell. If I add it to the execute trigger of my component, when I run the component with a debugger, we can see it activating the component. I have my no debug statement. And when I step onto that, it will no longer let me debug this component. However, there is a drawback to this approach. If I have a debug statement in my proc code, I can reinstantiate the debugger. I can now debug my component as normal. The second drawback is as follows. When I go into my component for the first time and hit the no debug statement, I can simply use a debugger to skip the statement no debug. And again, carry on debugging my component as normal. So no debug in proc code isn't an ideal approach. The better approach is to use no debug on the command line. So I say slash no debug. and the components I want to compile in the no debug style. This time when I run the component, I will not be able to debug it. So we can see the activate to activate the component, but when I say step in, it won't even let me step into the component. If I hit the debug statement, again, this has no effect. When using the Uniface debugger, there are some other considerations. Remote debugging gives an attractive option for deployment debugging. That is, you can set up the remote debugging options and connect when you need to debug the session. This potentially has drawbacks in that the remote debugging options do add a level of polling so it could impact performance. It also leaves the application open to debugging by anybody who happens to have the Uniface debugger. In practice it is better to have a parallel set of shortcuts that are used exclusively for debugging as and when required. For Unix debugging the only real option is remote debugging. This is because we do not have a graphical debugger for Unix. Another option for debugging is the extended trace using the dollar proc tracing assignment setting. This can be useful although it only gives a snapshot of what has been executed. It does not show the values of variables as they pass through the system, so understanding how a condition is evaluated may be more difficult. The debugger is targeted at logic and code fault finding. For performance debugging, you should use something like the assignment file setting dollar proc profiling. As a final reminder, consider using the no debug compile switch to prevent debugging of your components. As we saw in a demo, the no debug proc statement can be skipped using a debugger. Thank you.